Welcome to Bird's Eye View Media. Today we're going to be talking about films that need sequels, that never got sequels, or have, or at least have not gotten the sequels we're yet. We're fucking bullshit. So the first movie is what? Dragon Tattoo. So the girl with the dragon tattoo. Exceptional. I loved that movie. It might be one of my favorite movies. David Fincher directing... Daniel Craig, great actor. Rooney Mara, back when she wasn't super well-known, nominated for an Oscar for it. Great, and, great, great film. And talk about a cast really grabbing hold of a script and making it come to life. That is one of the few movies that, at least from my experience, I was truly immersed in. And when it was over, I mean, I didn't even know it was a book series, didn't know anything about it. When it came out, it looked cool in the trailers. I went and saw it, and I instantly... Though I knew that they were supposed to make the sequels, fucking pricks, <laughs> at the time they were going to make them, I had to run out and buy the books and read them all within like a two week span because the story was that good, I had to know. There are still plans. The, the problem is the funding that Fincher wanted to be able to make Hornet's Nest and uh, played with fire um, wasn't what... Uh, Fincher wanted to make the film and there were some issues with casting it is possible we might see sequels someday but there's it's not in pre-production it's, it's there's not no happen. plans I mean, this late in the game it was supposed to be made the, the the winner that that movie came out it was set to start that fall and they were going to film the the two remaining books yeah back to back mm-hmm. so that way they could release them quicker if that didn't happen, and with the time that's passed, it's not going to get done. And by the time they come up with that budget, Daniel Craig's going to not be interested or too yeah. old to do it. And, you know, you got to get Rooney Mara, who's probably going to be in a franchise by then at this point. I don't know. Um, she seems to... She just did Peter Pan. And if Peter Pan hadn't flopped, she would already be in a franchise. Yeah, that's a good So, uh, it's very upsetting because the pacing of that movie is as best as you can possibly do pacing. The rate at which the movie moves is phenomenal. It is so well done. Every character is really, really intricate, and that's something that dramas fail to do time and time again. And the best part is, having read the books, and if you've, if any of you have actually dived a little deeper into the story, you know that this story was so complex, like he's saying, but in the grand scheme of the entire story arc, it only scratches the surface. And um, I, we are aware that the th- three movies have already been made in Swedish by you know the Swedish film company with Naomi Rapace, Rapace, however you say her name, the Prometheus I'm be girl. Quite frank, I'm tired of you hipsters telling people that those movies were better. I watched them. I couldn't finish them. They sucked. I only watched the first movie. I only watched Girl with the Dragon Tattoo in the Swedish version and the American version. And I, the story is different in the Swedish version. And to be honest, I can understand people saying they prefer the plot of the Swedish version. But to be honest, it's all about tone and cinematic value. It's not even close. The way that the American version is shot... The performance that Rooney Mara creates. I mean, I really think she makes the character so much more interesting than she is in the Swedish version. She's much more normal in the Swedish version. On top of that, like it, if, when, you, when you read the book, obviously like any book compared to a movie, there's so much more detail. Yeah. And the American version, I don't care what they say, did a much better job visually bringing that detail to life, which is the main point of a movie made from a book is to bring a picture to the words that are already written that girl who plays uh the girl with the dragon tattoo doesn't look anything like what is written Mm -hmm. in the swedish version which is sad because it was written by a swedish person (laughs) and they couldn't get their own country's product right but if you watch the girl with the dragon tattoo in the american version it is perfect she is short she is pale she is slender (laughs) <laughs> that did come this out a little like bit the creepy. most shallow critique. Well, no. Not every repair, it's fucking ugly. <laughs> well, my point being, as fucked up as that sounded, and I did kind of say slender a little creepy there. Slender? But that is exactly how she is pictured in the book, whereas the other girl is, 
She's got a, a round face. She's got round hips. She's uh, a much more... She looks more like a teenager trying to rebel against her parents instead of someone who's yeah, it, making a life choice. She, For some reason, when I look at Rooney Mara versus Naomi... Um, I believe it. It, it. Rooney seems like a real person that you could meet someone who's really taken that lifestyle home. Someone who's all about like, fuck everything. I just want to hack shit with my laptop. You know, very weird hobbies. Naomi, it just feels like a regular person who sort of likes to act like that, but isn't really committed. You like know? she's more like just trying to do it because she thinks it'll get her attention by irking people. Whereas with with Rooney Mara's rendition, you are just even with the way her face looks and her expressions, she reflects the character's true inner mental issues that she is trying to overcome at different aspects of the movie. Like, yeah, I believe. That she is socially frustrated and socially awkward. And the bottom line is, even if the plot suffers in the second movie and the third movie, the manner in which the film was shot, the way David Fincher created the tone, the way he paced it, and the acting from Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara, I don't even care if the plot is weak. That is such a great combination already. You don't even need it to be like this ridiculously intricate thing. So it really needs a sequel. It really, really does. I could have done without the butt rape. That fucker had it coming. Don't get me wrong. I just didn't visually need to see it. <laughs> I But again, <laughs> it's about the tone of the film. It's a gritty, well, dark film. The world is wrong. filled with evil. The world is filled filled with sexual abuse and sexual abuse is a big theme that just comes up and up and, and it, up it, it really is and it's movie. actually a much bigger piece of that character before the the book's storylines even take place yeah but oh that was painful <clears throat> but to be honest that movie is easily a top tier movie that movie its quality on every front is much higher than the average drama it's it's it Let really put, needs to be continued. That movie is so good that even with the acclaim that it got, in my eyes, it is still underrated. Oh, absolutely. I agree 100%. Even though it got Oscar nods, it still really uh, overlooked. I would say that would be that should be reviewed on the same plane as movies like Titanic. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I think it's way better than Titanic. Well, I think it's better than <laughs> Titanic, but I'm saying in the sense that... Yeah, but the like the amount of viewed. hype it yeah. gets. I like, see. Yeah, it should be up there with like Titanic Absolutely. and Saving Private Ryan as these masterpieces on film. Absolutely. I agree. Rest in peace, Keanu Reeves. We miss you. What are you talking about? Well, he died of cancer, didn't he? I mean, did you <laughs> see what he smoked in that movie? I mean... <laughs> Who's, don't, nobody could film that hey, movie man, smoking that much. He's and dead. 